in the first lockdown, I somehow developed a interest in Nikon cameras. I have always liked Nikon cameras. However, I started to use more of them and particularly some of the sort of 1980s cameras, which at the time they were first out, I had sort of ignored them slightly. And I bought a couple on eBay and had a go with them and had bought some in February and I got quite hooked on Nikon cameras. And I've gone through the things like the F75 and the FAC. And the camera I was slightly not sure about was the camera I'm going to talk about today. And it could entitle today's talk, When is a Nikon not a Nikon? And the answer to that by some people if, is when it is a FE10. And here we have a FE10. There's also a camera called a FM10, which is very, very similar, but has a mechanical shutter, I believe, where the FE10 is a electronic shutter. And you might look at this camera and you say, well, it's a Nikon because it says Nikon. And it's obviously in the Nikon's um, type and it's quite a nice looking camera. It's not a really, really cheap rip off Nikon. The issue with it is, although it was commissioned by Nikon and is in was in the Nikon catalogue, it was actually manufactured by that well-known other camera company that manufactured a lot of cameras for other people. And I'm talking about Casina. And Casina had a, a very good Lars factory, but the cameras perhaps didn't always have the same quality as some of the Nikon cameras. Now this camera was produced in about 1994. Some people claim that it was originally for um, developing markets rather than the rest of markets. I'm not completely sure about that argument, but it was slightly against some of the current trends of the time. It wasn't an automatic camera and it had um, man a lot of manual settings. And let's just look at this and as I look at the camera I will talk through some of the features. It is a very light plastic body and to open we've got the traditional open spring and the camera at the back and you see how plastic the back door is and it's a manual to load to set the ISO is manually done here. There is no DX coding at all which is fine. The lens I have put on this camera is one of the E series and it's the 50mm which is almost a pancake lens because as I said it's manual focusing but what you do have you have the option we either have shutter speeds which we can set manually or we can do aperture priority by putting the camera on A and then when we've set the aperture the camera will automatically set the shutter speed. So to use this camera we have to manually focus and decide whether we are going to use aperture priority or shutter and do it manually. Um, so let's for the sake of argument I'm going to just use aperture priority so I'm photographing it in this room and you can hear it's quite a slow shutter speed there that the camera has determined. If I was to put it on a shutter speed, I'm going to put it on 1 15th here, if I simply press I've got the shutter speed flashing at 1 30th, um, 1 30th is and I, it will flash until I've got the uh, aperture which is suitable for the shutter speed. So we can do a metered reading there. The other nice feature, well I think there's several nice features. Sometimes with very basic cameras you don't have a depth of field um, preview button. 
we do have a depth of field and it's there. So if we want to see our depth of field, we've got it there. We've also got this interesting button here on the side, which reminds me of on the Canon um, A1, it's a double exposure. And remember that Casina did make, I think it was the 650 Canon, so there are slight similarities, but that didn't have this um, depth of field, but it did have this um, double exposure. We also have a slightly hidden self timer here that if we press that self timer, you can see it flashing. And after I think it's 10 seconds, it will click. I don't know if I round on. So yeah, there we are. And that is basically the camera. I took it out, not quite sure um, how I was going to get on with it. And well, it was so light, it was easy to use. I like the manual operations. I always quite like the E lens, which I think is slightly an undervalued lens. I thought about photographing some of the monuments and statues of Dorchester. This is a funny little right heart which was replaced. It was in front of a pub and when they uh, took down the pub to build flats, they put it in front of these flats. Again, exposure absolutely fine. The um, This is on £4.100, which is a slightly contrasty film. This is a plaque across in the High Street that signifies that the poet John Powers, who wrote uh, Maiden Castle, um, had lived in this property. This was an incredibly grey Saturday afternoon. And I think the lens, this would have been on about F4. It was really, really dull. This chap, Benjamin Fairy, or Fairy, Fairy, was an architect and he built several churches in the town and Dorchester has this very distinctive high street and it's basically down to him because he designed the major buildings that you see as you drive down the high street. He, as I said, he also designed this building which is called the Coin Exchange and the Town Hall, which is High East Street. The main street in Dorchester is split in two. You get High East Street, which starts at this point, and High West Street, which is the upper part of the street. I didn't get the exposure right for the clock tower. I was incorrect here. This is a lovely statue. This is of a guy called William Barnes, and I was quite pleased with how this statue has worked out. Yes, I've got slight, I could, I could have straightened it a bit more, perhaps I should have got higher. Um, this poor statue does get a lot of bird stuff on it. It's of this poet, poet William Barnes, who was a dialect poet and taught hardy actually. The back of the same building, Coin Exchange, was a police station at one point, and you can just about see that by this slightly decayed piece of stone. I was a bit dis this war memorial I felt could have been a bit sharper. I perhaps, um, I think I was on about 1.8, so perhaps it's not surprising. This building here was the courthouse in which the Torpodo Martyrs were sentenced to transportation to Australia. Quite a story. It's actually now owned by the TUC. And you have these significant figures here because there was an enormous march to High Park Corner, you see. And that's why we've got High Park Corner. Again, I was quite pleased with the sharpness and the areas of grey. So that is the Nikon F FE10. Nice camera to use. Was slightly disappointed with the photos but I think it was more to do with my mood on the day and perhaps the subject matter. But I will certainly use the FE10 again. I enjoyed using it and I think it has great potential. It's a camera that you don't see all that often on such as eBay but it does come up from time to time. This one wasn't expensive. I think I paid £25 for the body. Yes, it has some seen some wear, but functioning um, very well. So, 
give us here every 10, why not give it a go? Thanks as always for watching, bye for now.